Elizabeth, I go by Honest Liz on the internet and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about wet frizz. We will talk about what are the root causes of wet frizz and what to do to prevent it and it goes beyond the washing and styling. So I'm going to talk about those things that are not really talked about on social media. why wet frizz happens. Wet frizz is that, you know, that webby kind of texture when you wash your hair or after you style it or during the styling process or after shampooing, you see that your hair gets extremely tangled or even if it's detangled, you, you'll see frizz is there. It's never really a uh, seaweed consistency. And that's actually because number one reason could be flash drying and that can happen if you are using so many different brands in one wash i see this all the time with my one-on-one -on -one curly hair clients they use like five products in their curly hair routine and each one will be from a different brand it's just brands are not working with other brands to make the products compatible no they only make products that are compatible with each other they complement each other when you use the same brand line but when you use different different products from different different brands it can happen that there is a chemical reaction and these products are repelling each other causing the wet frizz in your hair so it's really not your fault it could be the products reacting with each other how to prevent that is to use maybe just one or two brands in your whole wash day routine. Don't use like four or five different brands. Split ends can also cause wet frizz. Like if you haven't had a haircut in say over eight months or one year, some people even haven't cut their hair for two years or more. If that is you, then and, and you have wet frizz, then you know that it's time for a trim. Get your haircut, a fresh haircut or breakage. Now, if you have hard water, hard water has a lot of minerals, okay, which can, hard water by itself is not a bad thing. But when hard water minerals are in your scalp and in your hair for a long time, and you're not doing anything to take it out of your hair, that can dry your hair out and it can cause breakage. Breakage can also be caused by using the wrong products for your hair. Like, so if your hair is feeling dry and brittle, make sure you minimize protein in your routine. So for example, if you're using protein mask, maybe don't use it if your hair is feeling brittle. Or if your hair gel has protein, maybe don't use it when your hair is feeling brittle. So like that, see what you have and see what your hair is feeling and do the things that your hair likes so that you can prevent these things too. I don't know about you, I am easily influenced, okay? <laughs> like if I see bloggers that I like promote something, I trust them and then I buy it. And you know, cause I'm like, oh, that's my favorite blogger. They've done this and so you know it must be good so i will also do it so i bought this this is the olaplex bonding oil this has silicone by the way and then i also bought this this is the l'oreal i saw this on some of my favorite bloggers uh i thought whoa maybe okay you know what uh i will give it a try but it it actually made my hair so dull and for the first time in years, I had wet frizz. So if you have wet frizz, just check what products are you using. Do your products have silicones? Do your products have extremely drying alcohols? Or uh, do your products have a lot of protein? Sometimes it can be very unsafe for your curly hair type. So avoid products with silicone because they can build up in your hair and make your hair dull and have like this coating on your hair so the water really can't hydrate your hair. So to remove that coating, that dullness, don't use products that are unsafe for you. 
and and i'm not just talking about products even oils can build up in your hair so if you are someone who is regularly hot oiling <laughs> doing your chumpy or like you know if if you you if you are from india traditionally everybody pours like buckets of oil in their hair before they shampoo but sometimes if you don't shampoo properly there is build up of oil in your hair so the next time you wash your hair there's wet frizz because of the build up water is not able to hydrate your hair so there's no seaweed you can't see seaweed wet slimy noodles at all because there's build up so how do you prevent build up in your hair and how to prevent wet frizz from build up is first of all using a clarifying detox shampoo to remove all the build up frequently like if you haven't used a clarifying shampoo yet go for it if you are in india i know that the maintain clarifying shampoo is great it even removes hard water build up you can use your, use my code on the website if you want discount and if you're in the US or any other part of the world then the new um K18 shampoos are great there's a K18 detox shampoo that also removes build up like all the build up and it's a good investment to have so that way you can prevent wet frizz that is caused by build up the water okay okay i know i know the post you have seen they'll say oh you're not styling with enough water so you just add more water but the thing is it's not just any water you want to add bottled water you need water that is like soft water so if you have hard water in your taps there's no point adding more hard water in your hair it's not going to help so if you have hard water in your taps make sure that you have a bottle of drinking water in your bathroom so that you can pour it in your hair before you style the soft water is easily absorbed by your hair and that way the products can be absorbed easily in your hair so that's the thing that's the key thing when they say add more water what they really mean is add more soft water in your hair so that way it softens your hair and it can prevent wet frizz wet frizz can happen when you wash your hair right So when you wash your hair what happens is that it changes the pH of your hair everything has a pH value okay so sciency stuff okay imagine this is the scale and in the middle is number 7 there's 1 and there's 14 so that's the pH scale and water is smack in the middle with a pH of 7 okay and your hair has the ph of 3 or 4 so your hair is actually in acidic but when you use shampoos again and then again and then again and if you had if you get hair color and then if you use deep conditioners and if you use styling products your ph value can increase to up to 14 like bleached hair can go up to 14 so then your hair becomes alkaline that can also cause wet frizz the ph of your hair so if you have say low porosity hair like mine like thick coarse hair it's it's very hard to get wet it's very hard to do anything with it like that that's the kind of hair that i have it's almost like coconut so if you have low porosity hair like mine then you want to use acidic things like for that's why i love uh, apple cider vinegar rinses clear shampoos should not have any creamy things inside those are the kind of shampoos i like to use so if you have low porosity hair you should use things like that to bring up the acidity alkaline level of your hair but say if you have high porosity hair if you have color treated hair if you have bleached hair or if you have like hair dye any kind of even henna if you have any kind of color treatment in your hair it automatically makes your hair high porosity so if you have high porosity hair then you want to not <laughs> use a lot of shampoo because that will continue to bring up your ph and put you in the alkaline position gone your hair will be so extremely dry so you have to bring it back 
towards the acidic level and use lots of deep conditioning treatments, bond repair treatments, um, maybe also use oil between styling. For example, you can do leave-in oil and gel like that for high porosity hair. These are the things if you do that, then you can avoid wet frizz based on your porosity. It happens to me sometimes when I use these random products together. It happens to me when I use too much gel. So what I do is after applying styling products on my hair, I find that uh, it's, it's all wet frizz. Then I put the shower on and like zoom, zoom out like that. So there's some water in my hair, like it's not washing the styling products away, but it's just getting a little bit of water. Well, of course, you don't have to zoom in and zoom out of your shower. You can always just have a spray bottle in your hand and make sure to spray soft bottled water into your hair after you've styled, especially after gel. So that way your gel can absorb that extra water and then you'll have those wet slimy noodles of hair like that. Yes, moisture in the air, your hair swells up, okay? And the cuticles, it's all, it, your hair swells up to say it uh, simply. And then if your hair has too much moisture, like for example, say you did the hot oil treatment, you shampooed, then you put a mask, then you put a curl cream, then you did a leave-in, then you put like three gels, and then you are out in the humidity. So you have so much moisture in your hair, there's so much moisture in the air also. All this moisture can make your hair swell up and cause something called as high grill fatigue. So in that stage, your hair feels really soft like cotton candy and it frizzes up and it refuses to be in these little curl families. So humidity can cause it. So what you do is instead of using too much moisture in humidity, add a little bit of protein also. Do a protein mask or use a protein cream or use a protein gel. So that way there is protein in your hair also and it can balance protein and moisture overall. So don't be afraid of using protein. Of course, too much protein causes protein overload, but that's a whole other story. Don't be afraid of using protein uh, so that you don't over moisturize your hair. Here's a summary of causes of wet frizz. Number one, not enough water. So if you're styling or washing your hair or whatever with less amount of water, use more soft water, not hard water. Second, not enough moisture. So if you if your hair is feeling dry and brittle, it can cause wet frizz. So make sure you add a little bit of moisture in your hair in terms of deep conditioning mask or bond repair mask or use a cream. Curl creams are so nice to soften brittle hair and that way it can prevent wet frizz. Then flash drying, then split ends. If you haven't had a haircut in more than six months, it's time. <laughs> go for a trim, go for a fresh haircut. And by the way, if you don't have a curly hair specialist near you, or if you don't have a stylist that you can trust, you can totally book me for a virtual haircut session. <laughs> I can like guide you online on, on video call, like, okay, cut here, cut here, cut here. I have a system, don't worry. So it works. If you can trust me and follow my instructions, it's possible. Next uh, cause for wet frizz is breakage. Then there's buildup. Buildup can be caused by using silicone products or too much oil and butters in your hair or too much protein also. So make sure you clarify your hair from time to time to remove all the buildup, remove all the unsafe products and you'll see that your wet frizz will be minimized. Soft water to style your hair. Hard water does cause wet frizz because of the minerals the hard water has. I explained earlier in the videos and meanwhile if you need personalized help uh, know that I uh, offer one-on-one -on -one personal curl coaching so you can book me for that and whatever problems you have bring it we can solve it like this if you have problems know that there will be solutions so don't be like without hope we always have hope all right